Lindsay to kind of hear everything that I'm going to start to talk about. Um, hi, Lindsay. This is really for you, but where is she? I'm on my camera. Um, but it's just right now, it is just the two of us. It's Avalon and myself. I know Lila can't be here until 630 on Wednesdays, which is totally fine. And that's something I want to talk to my group about a little bit. Usually when you're shooting a movie, the one person you don't want on a set is guess who? The writer. The writer is so married to these characters and they know them so well that they want to interject all the time. And the director at this point, when you're going to shoot a movie, has already interpreted it as their own. They've made changes, they've suggested changes to the writer. They've like really kind of made it their own because film, unlike stage, is a writer's medium, as a director's medium. Stage is definitely more of a writer's medium. You want your writer around. Once you get to shooting a movie, you don't know, always want the writer around. The writer's kind of like, well, I really had this vision and I wanted it to be something. We don't want your opinion anymore. It has now become the director's job. So um, I have a little PowerPoint presentation. Let me know if somebody pops in and says, Jojo, they're in the waiting room, okay? You're my, you're my now secretary, Avalon. Have you heard any uh, chit chats? They're like, oh, I can't make it, blah, blah, blah. So just let me know. You're muted. Gabby Eskenazi has her grandparents visiting, and Dottie is frowny face can't. Got it. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. No biggie. We don't care. Um, so I just wanted to say, for those of you who joined this class, we are not shooting until the 20th, so we actually have some time, until, but we've got a lot to do to get to shooting on the 20th, okay? So it is, it will take us two months. It could take us three months to edit. I'm still doing Emma, as everybody knows. Um, these things take time to shoot and prepare. And we are gonna be shooting like one scene a day on Sundays. So it might take us a lot of time to figure out our locations and things like that. Today, we're gonna look at some things Called breakdowns and we're going to look, talk about a bunch of different roles on a set um, because it's completely different than um, anything you've ever heard about in stage. So my first question is have you Avalon ever made a video or filmed anything that's been a narrative? A narrative is something that tells a story so it's not necessarily something like oh yeah we did the such and such challenge on TikTok that's not a narrative. A narrative tells a story. So have you ever shot anything that's told a narrative? Um, I had to do a short film project. It was just a day in the life of an inanimate object. Okay. And I actually did this guy right here. Nice. A little precious. My precious. So cute. Okay. So, and what was, what class was that for? Was that for like, um, English? um, this was, this was for a class I did at the Sally ride. Okay. So, uh, so like UCSD, um, okay. it was a, like a camp, like a writing camp. And yeah, it was, camp. I, cool. it was the same week as I did the writing camp. Okay, cool. Okay. And so, uh, so you wrote about your, your bunny rabbit and what was your yeah. story about? Um, pretty much it was very simple because it was just stop motion animation and filming. So kind of yeah. a lot going on in a week. I was say, um, that's really difficult. Yeah. And it was about um, pretty much this guy got colored by the red pencil and then he harbored a grudge against the red pencil. And then the red pencil apologized and then they walked off into the sunset. So, yeah. Okay. So it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Very good. Okay. Easy peasy lemon cheesy. There's no, there's no rules to filmmaking other than we are doing a narrative, which is totally different than some kind of TikTok video. Okay. Um, which are more stylized and, and a little bit different. So um, I'm going to roll in. I'm doing a screen share of my, oops. Debbie says she said she. Who's coming in? 
Gabby Eskenazi, she says, because it's right now, she can do it, but she wants the code. Right. Okay, I'll send her. Uh, do you have the code handy? I do. Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, you let know me what? look. I, hold on, I got it, because I just sent it to Marina, who said the same thing to me. Like, I don't have it. But yeah, because you didn't sign up. Mm -hmm. um, okay, dismiss. Let me send it to her. Gabby Eskenazi, I have her email. It is, um, I have her email. Okay. So tell her to check her email. Shoot, man, hold on, it's not now, it won't let me do it. Hold on. I just, hold on, I do it on my phone. Do, 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 do. Gabby, hold on. Gabby Eskenazi. Should I send it to Sumani? 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 Sure. Tell Gabby Eskenazi to check her email. Okay. So. Let me, I'm gonna, meanwhile, I'm gonna pull up. So, cause I'm sure Lindsay's going, what are they, what are they talking? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Give me some time, Lindsay. Okay, now Speaking I Speaking to the future. I am, here we go. I'm gonna do a screen share. It's not going to be the, oh gosh, this stupid thing. I was trying to, I wish, like present, viewer presentation. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let me stop that. I'm going to now, how do I go back to Zoom? I'm going to do a screen share. Okay. <clears throat> Production meeting day one. Oops. Can you see this thing at the end, at the bottom, this like mm -hmm. slide two? Yeah, I don't know why that happens. Oh my gosh, just go back to present, you idiots. Oh my gosh, it's driving me crazy. So you can see this, this bottom part? Yep. yep. So, oh yeah, it's, go, it's, go, it's gone. Okay, Gabby's getting, going in, Okay. it says, I think. Okay, cool. She just put in K, so I don't know what that means, but I'm hoping that's a yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Exit, okay, I'm gonna exit, I just want it to, just show me the stuff. Oh my God, I don't know how to do this. I'm trying, I'm trying kids. You're doing your best. I am doing my best. Okay, exit. I don't wanna exit. I wanna just show this stupid page. Oh my God, I'm gonna kill it. Okay, present. Murder of a web page. So here are the roles. These are the roles we have to fill and I'm, can answer all your questions about what does each role do? Because everybody thinks they know what a casting director does, right? So we have casting for this show. There are a lot of roles. I think there's like five or six. Um, directing camera, camera videography. It could be three different people. It could be one person that's directing, holding the camera, which is also the videographer. Location scout. That is somebody who's going to find all of the locations before we even shoot. So they have to pick out in the script where, what are all these different things? I think there's a hospital scene here. What are we gonna get for the hospital scene? Somebody's parents gotta be a doctor. Can we shoot at a hospital? I don't know. All that stuff, it's a very hard job to be a location scout, especially when you're 14 or 12 and you gotta try and tell people, oh no, we'll be fine. Don't worry, let us in. Our teacher's really cool. Um, costumes. Kind of self-explanatory script supervisor this is the director's right hand person if you were part of emma which you were not um avalon during emma i had a script supervisor was this girl taylor who wrote down every single shot i took so when i put scenes together she wrote down have two shot of x have one shot of such and such and she labeled each scene. So I knew what I had in the can. Problem was, is looking for it. 
all the time. I had to go and like find all these different shots. I'm like, I don't have them. Or then I would have them and then they would zoom in and zoom out and oh, it was a mess. Script supervisor, very important role. Somebody who likes to take notes. Somebody who's meticulous. Oops, hold on, we got a participant. Hold on, there comes Gabby Eskenazi. Okay, hi Gabby. Welcome to the party. Hi, Gabby. Welcome to the party. Hi. Hi. So we're talking about um, the script we're going to be shooting. And so this is our production meeting. I was just explaining. We're not going to shoot until the 20th um, but of September. But we have a lot of positions that we're going to talk, we're talking about. So we're just kind of going through this. There's casting, directing, locations, costumes, script supervisor, which I just finished talking about. Editor, another very important role, but geez Louise, you got to have the patience of Joe to be the editor. Takes a long time. Um, and that is probably the hardest job up here because, um, and it will take the most time. So if you've got a ton of workload, don't pick that one. Assistant director, they call them ADs. Um, assistant director is not somebody who assists really the director. What do you think the assistant director does? Yes, Avalon. Um, they like sub in for the director and the director can't and just kind of like is the director, but not the director, but I'm being the vague director, and I don't know what I'm saying. Right. So the director is usually looking at the camera, what the camera is shooting. So two people are sitting here and they're having a big fight sequence, da, 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 but we're in a grocery store. So the assistant director is like, okay, you grocery cart lady, you're going to be walking by. Da, 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 da is telling all the, and like, let's say somebody bumps their cart into the scene and comes into the scene, that's usually assistant director is telling that person when to go. So it's not necessarily what's being, the director's focusing on what the shots are. The assistant director's like telling everybody when to go. And usually on a big movie, you have one, two, three, four of them. Okay, you got, especially if you're doing a, like a speed chase, high speed chase, you know, you got people coming from all over. There's a lot of directors. They're all ADs. Very important people. Your ADs, if you ever an actress on a TV show, they're the ones that sign you in and sign you out. Your first AD is usually kind of like a major jerk because they are literally there, the first person on the set, and they are the last ones to leave. They work like 20 hour days every day for months on end. Um, second ADs work even harder because they're trying to help that person and support them. There are so many things to do as an AD. It is very, very difficult jobs. Why people do them? I have no idea. But at the same time, do they want to be directors? Absolutely. It's a way to get director points. You have to, to get into unions, the whole different story. Uh, a lot of directors become assistant directors to become a director. Um, it's not always an easy path. Some people just like ADing because it is the organization of the set. It all comes from the AD and the script supervisor. Okay, so it's just a very important job, I'm just saying. Okay, hold on, now we'll go to the next one. Okay, what do you think each job does? So I've just kind of sort of explained it a little bit, but um, anyone wanna say, okay, what do we think a casting director does? Who wants to go? Well, probably cast the show. Yeah, but sometimes they don't walk in your door, right? You gotta go out and look for them. So if you need somebody who's like five, oh shoot, we don't have any five-year-olds. We gotta go find a five. Who's got a brother or sister? Who's got this? Who's got that? Who's available that day? That's the biggest. Oh no, we got a birthday party. Oh da 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 da. I mean, it's a pain in the butt being casting director. Super pain in the butt. So you'll read when we read Lila's script in a minute. Hopefully we have time for that. Yeah, we do. Um, you'll see how many act, how many roles she has to fill. And uh, honestly, a lot of times you're like, okay, please play this part because I just so need you to play this part. Then you turn out they're not that great in it. And then you kind of have to go, you know what? You're not that great in it. I gotta, I gotta move on to somebody else. Um, or they give you a ton of attitude. And then you're like, okay, I don't want that in my show. Um, because sometimes like, oh, I'm, I'm doing you a favor. Okay. So we did a, 
last fall we did our first 10 minute play festival and jack was like our solo boy who showed up to auditions so he put himself in to five shows because every director wanted him to be in their show because he was the only boy and everybody had some kind of love interest with jack so jack did five shows well jack went crazy he was like I'm doing Outsiders, I'm doing five, one, 10 minute plays, and I'm also in Sound of Music to cast. I mean, he was like literally going crazy. So as a casting director, you have to say, well, what else is going on, Jack? Can you do this? We need you. Please don't think it's too much. I want to take care of you. So it's almost like you're babysitting the cast and making sure they're going to show up on the day that we need them. I'm telling you now, nine times out of 10, they're gonna call you up and be like, oh, I forgot, I had a birthday party. My mom wanted to get her nails done today. And you're gonna go, oh my God, I can't believe she just did that to me. Remember these things, casting directors hate that stuff and you just move through it and you think of it next time, mm, not gonna cast that person, okay? Happens all the time. So, director so it's not just picking people it's a little bit of babysitting in that casting director role okay you got to pick those people and then make sure they show up they will show up and by the way gabby askenazi if they're gluten-free or whatnot casting has got to tell us <laughs> and tell us what how to make them happy you get them a gluten-free pizza and you do all these different things for them on that day. That is a casting, what a casting director does. Like, okay, she's kind of getting that, uh, she just lost her grandma. So I know this scene has to deal with a grandma dying. So you might want to like, you know, pay homage to her grandma in the credits or whatever, you know, all that in back of jigs comes into casting. Directing and camera work. So I was telling, I was telling Avalon and we are being recorded today for Lindsay. Um, Filmmaking is a director's medium, it is not the writer's medium. So this becomes their baby. They read this script, they said, oh my God, it's so amazing, I'm gonna make it mine. And they truly have that opportunity. And you don't always want your writer on your set because your writer's gonna be like, no, no, it's my baby. I have this and I want this to happen and I hate Jojo for doing this and da da da, -da. how dare she change my vision and blah, blah, blah. There's fights between writers and directors all the time on movie sets. Just best you just tell the writer that uh, once you cut a scene, it looks perfect and it's totally their words, you kind of give it to them. And then you have your editor change things around, okay? You never really want your writer hanging around all the time, which is why I told Lila, it's not that important for you to come to a production meeting because guess what, Lila, we don't want you around. I love you, Lila. But it's really the director's medium. So this is somebody who's read this, going to read her script, which we're going to get to today, and really wants to put their stamp on it. Like it's something in them gels. They get it. Now, bye. something in them, it gels. So whether it's, um, and Lila and myself will pick that person. Okay, because somebody's got to kind of kiss Lila's butt to sell, tell her how great a script is because they want to become the director, right? And then I got to kind of say, mm, I don't know. I don't know if Blake's going to get your romantic love story, honey. He might go off and like, la la land, but you never know. And she says, no, no, I think he really is going to get it this time. No, no. Whatever. The director has to sell us on how they're going to make it their own. And this also comes with camera work which is kind of why I put camera in there. Every director has a different style. Um, I know a lot of you guys are too young to see like a Quentin Tarantino movie, but you know about him. Um, he's got a very stylized way of shooting. He's very graphic, shows you lots of pits and teeth and blood and guts and brutal fighting and stuff like that. Um, camera whips around in slow motions and you see it all very some people are like yes that's what i want some people are like nope i want it bright and sunny i want it just like a sunday ice cream da, 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 da. 
you never really know. Um, talking about some of your favorite movies and the director kind of gets it. Maybe you have the same kind of likes and dislikes of TV shows and brightness and you're inspired by Mean Girls. Uh, I can tell you Lila kind of wrote this thinking, channeling her inner, um, oh God. Oh, what Is was that? Is one you read with like everyone that Oh yeah, you that? read it. You were there at the read through. So it was kind of like, what's that Blake Lively show that? Um, Right. Okay. As long as she moves back. Heather's. I, I got Heather's vibes from it. I don't know why. Yeah, a little Heather's vibes going on. But anyway, it's it's very much like schoolgirls killing each other, you know, uh, vibe. But she, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, so anyway, a director can come with any kind of approach. They can say, I want to shoot it in black and white. I want to shoot it um, in a higher aperture that's going to let more sunlight in, so it's going to be more yellow. Whatever the case, the movie becomes their vision because they love it so much. So if it's something that, if you have an artistic bent in filmmaking um, and photography, put your hand up directing. It's a little bit of a different vibe and um, it is your vision. And you have to put that into the camera and take words that aren't yours into the camera, but through your artistic vision, okay? Uh, lighting and sound. <clears throat> well, these are the people that help you get there, okay? Um, this will be Andrew but somebody might be able to help us. Uh, to, if you're interested in lighting, lighting is key. Man, when I first started Zooming, I was like, okay, I don't have it on right now, but I, first thing I bought was a ring light. I was like, I'm not having no wrinkles on the old Zoom. You know, I wanna look a little bit younger. So I went out and I got a ring light and then it, all these different things. I was like, oh shoot, I'm gonna be projecting myself in HD. This is crazy town. All the good actresses want good lighting, okay? I've got, I've got a couple of good lights. Um, I can teach you some basics of lighting and so can Andrew. It's all about softening your looks and creating a mood. Um, sometimes we wanna give a little bit of a dark bend, especially if we're gonna kill somebody in a forest or something like that. You still need to see it. It can't be shot totally at night. You gotta have lights on. Um, but that's how you can slow down the camera and make it look dark. So it, even though you shoot a bunch of light on it, there's certain um, filters on your cell phones and things like that that are wonderful that I never grew up with. I grew up with old school you know, video cameras um, and film cameras, that's how I learned. Um, so anyway, now you guys have awesome filters. By the way, this is all gonna be shot on iPhones. So it's, I'm not running camera equipment and all this kind of garbage, but um, unless somebody's got some camera at home lying around and then we'll play around with it. But um, I think we can do it all on cell phones and in this day and age, that's, Apple loves that. Um, I was telling, so locations. What do you think a location scout does? Anybody? Go for it, Gabby. Probably like find the location to film the project. Right, so it's based, um, it's cold calling and finding things that we could shoot at. In fact, I was telling my sister, I always tell my sister her house is like my spa. So I go there when I'm, I'm super stressed out and I'll go and she'll like cut cucumber slices and we'll put them on her faces and sit in her Zen garden and we like relax, okay? I said, I might need your backyard to shoot this movie because I think there's a scene like they go to a spa or something like that. So she's like, okay. but. It's doing that. And generally parents are like, sure, it's okay, honey. But then they don't want 12 people showing up at their house on a Sunday in the middle of the afternoon. Um, there, is a, there is a hospital scene in here. I'm hoping somebody's dad's a doctor and we can shoot in their office on a Sunday. But that's the person, the location person's got to find that doctor and then go ask. So it ain't going to be JoJo. It's going to be some kid. I will help you, but it's a, it's a big job. Locations is a big job. Costuming, Avalon. What's costuming? And is it just picking outfits? 
No, it's um, seeing what the director's thinking and trying to show more about the characters through what they wear and seeing how the people play their characters mm -hmm. and then giving them clothes to help that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, casting, it doesn't, they don't have to be our Hey Judge or Kids. We can cast outside. Valerie's got a ton of friends that would come and help out. But that casting director's got to get them to drive from Orange County down here and, and call JoJo and say, JoJo, is it okay if I pay a tank of gas for four of them to come down on one Sunday? Yeah, then we figure that all out. Script supervisor. Gabby, what do you think that is? I don't know. I've never heard of that before. Okay, well, I was explaining it a little bit to Avalon. It's um, kind of the secretary of, this, of the whole show probably one of the most important jobs on the set um right hand of the director so they are literally writing down what they shot so it's like what'd you get oh i shot a two shot of our two actors in the forest then i got a reverse so i got this shot so all that is a reverse shot single two shot da, da, da. shot on a green screen i got all of it so when i did emma hannah's parents did a slate you know those little things this is a slate script supervisor writes the scene numbers down trust me your editor they want this so the editor goes oh, okay i know exactly what happened right they know where what scene is shot on that iphone camera because the script supervisor said it's in there and now i just got to find it in all the different files that come out okay so script supervisor writes on the slate and keeps, I have it, I have my Emma one. Hold on, I'll show you my script supervisor notes from Emma. They're around here, so, oh, it's right here. Oops, you can't even see it. Oh, you can't see it. Anyway, it's a big, it's a piece of paper and there's tons of writing all over it. But I have everything. So I had two cameras rolling that day. So I have both cameras, camera one, what camera one got, what camera two shot got. And what actors? Huge job. Very importante. Lots of people love script supervising because they're like the secretary that wanted to go in, out in the field. So you are the director's assistant. You literally write everything down. And then sometimes the directors go, hey, you know what? I liked take five. So then you circle take five. Like that's the one editor you're going to use because the director liked take five. And then the editor's going, oh, I got to go all the way to take five. But at least Somebody wrote it down, right? <laughs> the editor just has to find it. Which goes to the next thing, the editor. Why people become editors, I have no idea. Um, it is a very, very difficult job. Um, it is somebody who has spare time um, to, to put the puzzle together. If you have a good script supervisor that wrote everything, it's usually pretty easy. Um, the key is, to move it along. Uh, most of the time, and I'll, I'm, I'm gonna call Lindsay out a little bit here. When Lindsay did a little promo video for 13, when we did 13, um, she shot a bunch of the kids doing scenes from it. And she left, she left a wing on each end. And so what she needed to do is cut the two ends. So it would go like, what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? Instead she'd go, it went, what did you think? I don't know, what'd you think? I don't know, what'd you think? So it was very, that instead of two seconds, it took six seconds, which doesn't seem like a lot of time, but you just saw the difference, right? It's really fast. Look at a commercial, commercials are 30 seconds. They tell a whole story about like Folgers coffee in the morning and they tell it in 30 seconds. And they're like, best part of waking up, Folgers in your cup, woo -woo -woo. And they even have a song in there. So <laughs> there's like so much you can tell in 30 seconds. There's a whole network QB now that's dedicated to the 10 minute show. So it's like our attention span is so tiny. So there is nothing. We do quick cuts, you edit together, and you try and get it as close as you can. Um, I'm constantly trimming. 
every time I'm in Emma. And it's really frustrating because sometimes like Michelle didn't take a beat. She, she just, I, I correct her line and then she'd go, and then I'm like, hold on, give it a beat and now go. <laughs> just so I have enough to cut her together. Cause I would hear myself going and cut, you know, I just needed to cut myself out of cut. So editing a lot of tedious work, but I will help them. I will give lots of notes. So the assistant director, I was telling Avalon a little bit about what assistant directors do versus directing and how they're different from a script supervisor. Script supervisor is more of an assistant director than an assistant director. So what do assistant directors do? Avalon, go for it. Um, assistant directors kind of take care of the cast and like make sure everybody's like doing everything like you No, don't go in the fire no you you're gonna get burned alive no it's kind of like babysitting everybody like no don't do that do this no 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 don't go there do it no 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 don't go in the fire no 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 you're gonna die so is it like a stage manager kind of a little bit like a stage manager but the director is focused on this picture the assistant director is focused on getting all these other people into this picture for the director because the director is focused on these two actors having this total huge thing and not paying attention to the people walking on the street talking on their cell phone moving down da, 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 da. the assistant director is doing everything else and making the whole atmosphere come to life for the two actors that the director is focused on make sense so it's like they're kind of directing the background players and the atmosphere in general. Now this show doesn't have a lot of atmosphere, so it's just, we only need one, but it's still an important job because gotta keep all those actors happy who are hanging out because I gotta walk by on cell phones and have lunch next to, on the lunch tables and stuff like that. Should we do a big lunch scene, okay? That's the assistant director's job. Might not have a big, might not have to be in every, everything. So how is this going to work? How are we at Hey Jojo? I don't think I got to slide four. I think that's where I kind of gave up. Yeah. Um, so how are we at Hey Jojo going to be doing this? Um, that's a good question. This is the first time we've done this. So it's going to be a little trial by error. And um, I chose Lila's script because I thought it was pretty simple. Um, she has got a lot of work to do still. And we're going to read her script right now. Um, and you're gonna under you're gonna see it's gonna come crystal clear. I hope she comes on because it's six thirty-five, so she might come on. It'll become crystal clear what she needs to do because I told Lila, you're not giving the director enough direction. She's not telling. I'm like, where's my camera? How many people are in the scene? Who? Where is the scene? What's this? And I asked her all these questions. She's like, oh, Jim, so much. I'm like, exactly. There's so much to do. She's been working on it since June. So she just keeps forgetting and whatnot. We don't got time to forget. We're shooting on the 20th. And what we can't do our jobs working on this film, like securing locations, coming up with casting ideas, doing costuming, we can't do any of that until Lila tells us where we're shooting and what we're shooting and what her vision is. But the, the director's got, if he doesn't get a roadmap from Lila, she's hosed. So then they can do he, I say he, because it's so many male directors, but let's make it her she. She can make up her own mind on how to shoot this film, okay? If Lila doesn't give it to her. And that's gonna be a huge lesson. Lila's gonna be like, oh yeah, they totally changed it. Mm -hmm. And the director will change it if you do not give them. So it's kind of like a perfect script to kind of like change a little bit because well, I ain't giving it to you, okay? Just had a couple months. Change your script up, girl. So you guys want to give it a read? I have to leave okay. at 6.45, so as long as we... Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's, I think it's like 10 minutes. Yeah. If that. Um, let's see where to go. I put it on Lila's... That's Lila's script archive. Hmm. Ah, here we go. This is her most recent draft. Let me do a screen share. Ooh. Okay. Oh, she did write some stuff. Okay. Um, why don't Gabby, you be Gracie and Avalon, you read Ashley. I'll read Bethany right now. 
So outside in front of the school, birds chirping, a red 70s Mercedes drives by. Okay, <clears throat> we'll see about that, right? Uh, you see football being thrown overhead and school bell rings and about 30 kids bust out of school. Okay, now she has 30 kids. Okay, that's gonna be a little tough. Four girls in front of them and all, all in front of them all and the camera, cam camera focuses on them. So already we already know, okay, we've gotta be shooting at a school and we need 30 extras. Good luck, Lila. Come on, we have to get home. I don't want to be stuck in, at school for another minute. Well, then let's go. Gracie pulls open the door of her white Jeep and Madeline hops in the front seat. Brittany and Ashley sit, isn't the back seat. The group of kids walk by before a car pulls down the road. You see different cuts of the cars passing by. Different houses, white girls just want to have fun by Madonna. That's not by Madonna, it's by Cindy Lauper is playing. And then it pulls into a house. You can tell a family of a higher middle class. Gracie parks the car and girls get out. You hear a beep, a signal, Gracie's car, lock the car. She unlocks the door and the dogs run out and jumps on the girls. Gracie plops for keys on the table of the front entry and the girls uh, trail after Gracie in her nice pink fancy room. They all sit down and do their homework and you tell some time has passed when the music stops. Girls are doing the homework and then Bethany gets a phone call. Hey, mom. Uh, okay, uh, we'll be home in a minute. Ashley, we need to go home. Bye, guys. Bye. Gracie's phone buzzes. Oh, man. Uh, what was that? Nothing. It has to be something. Show me. Fine. Jeremy asked me to go to the movies. What'd you say? I said yes, duh. But you know I like him. Well, I like him too. But you know, I've liked him like forever. So, he likes me and there's really nothing I can do about it. God, why do you have to be such a bitch sometimes? Excuse me? Whenever I'm out of here, whatever, I'm out of here. Madeline walks out the door and into the woods behind Gracie's house. You can hear crickets chirping and leaves crunching beneath the girl's feet as Gracie follows Madeline. Even though it's dark, you can still see the girls. A bird flies out of a tree past the camera. I wasn't done talking to you. Well, I was. You're just jealous of me. You think you're so cool, but people only like you because I took you under my wing in seventh grade. Of course you think that's all about you. Like always, I'm popular because I'm nice to people. The only reason you're Queen Bee is because people are scared of you. Gracie smacks Madeline in the face. Madeline pulls Gracie to the ground. Gracie juts her knee into Madeline's stomach. Gracie tries to stand up. The girls yeah. her wrist, and they tumble across the sta stage, across the leaves. Gracie looks up at Madeline's face and slaps it. The girls stand up and Gracie pushes Madeline. Madeline trips over a shovel. Just try and tell people that I hurt you. Just try. They won't believe you. They never will because they all like me better and always will. But you wanna know what they will believe? They'll believe it when I tell them you're crazy and you should be sent to a mental institution. And if you think that there's something you can do to stop me, oh, you're wrong. My mind is made up. Madeline picks up the shovel she's tripped over. Madeline, put down the shovel right now. You'll regret this. Madeline doesn't listen and hits Gracie over the head with it nine times. Gracie oh. lies on the floor unconscious. Interior lunch tables at the school. Madeline's sitting in the middle of the table as cream brief with her squad. It's definitely a nice school, but something about the vibe feels off. There's chatter going on in the background, but not to the point where you can't hear the main actors. Oh my god, did you hear about Gracie? The police are investigating. Yeah, I don't let my dad, talk, who works at the news, just told us about it. Our dad! Fight starts out with the girls seeing their dad is on the news talking about the case. This is Brandon Jefferson from LA News, where the police have just reopened the Gracie Johnson case. For those you knew on the case, Gracie Johnson was a girl who bludgeoned, was bludgeoned with a shovel until her attacker thought she was dead. But when the police found her body, she was still grasping for life. She is currently on life support at Wilberton Hospital, and the ho doctors say that she's getting stronger. One doctor even suggested that she would be able to talk in a few months, but it's a very slim chance. To find out more about her situation, tune in tomorrow at 5 o'clock at LA News with yours truly, Brenda Jefferson. And now, back to the weather with Darla West. I want to hurt whoever hurt Gracie dead. I wouldn't even do it myself. 
You can now read Madeline, Gabby. Um, easy there, Bundy. We don't want you to be the next dead one. Hello, electric chair? I bet it was Kristen. Did you see the way that she looked out when I found out in class? She looked like she didn't even care. She wasn't even happy. Yeah, she looked guilty. I saw her smirk. <laughs> nah. What would her motive be? You only said that because you love her. Hey, yeah, right. She's such a loser. Oh, my God. Where are we? Right here. Uh, whatever. <laughs> my phone is going off right now. Okay. Right here. Whatever. Whatever. We should probably stop talking about Gracie. Why? You were the one who beat her or on something or something. Madeline looked straight to the audience, ready to deliver some serious news while the other people freeze. POV on Madeline. I didn't mean for it to be so bad. She wasn't supposed to be locked in the hospital. It was just a fight, but then it got more violent. We both had bruises all over our face and body. Then she told me that I was crazy. She would get me locked up. Everyone loves her and nobody would believe me. Then the rage came out. I picked up a shovel and hit her over the, over the head again and again and again. If only I knew. Madeline turns back to the reality of the group of high schoolers. As if. You were surprised. You were the one who loved her so much. But she didn't love you back, did she? I wouldn't be surprised if you were the one that hurt her. <gasps> well, look who took over role as Queen Bay. Watch it, buddy. Bethany has her phone next to her ear. Can you guys, like, shut up? I'm totally trying to talk to Daniela. Still, Bethany, but, onto the, oh my god, they're so loud and annoying. Ashley paints her fingernails. I have to go. See you guys. But it's only lunch. I said I have to go. Shh. Madeline storms off in a huff. Ashley and Brittany. Bye. Bye. As I drove to the hospital, the scene of my fight with Gracie kept playing over and over again in my head. Black Act 4 scene, music transition, hospital. I know what I have to do. Madeline walks into the hospital, signs a sheet, and walks in the room and stops to look at the girl in the bed. Hi, Gracie. Did you miss me? Mm. Do you remember that little fight we had? Mm. Then you must remember saying that you would never tell anyone about our fight. Mm. Well, we can't have that, can we? Madeline walks over to the outlet. You've been such a great friend, but I think you've had your run in life. You know, I didn't want it to have to be like this. Sometimes life just works in funny ways. Bye, Gracie. Mm. Oops. The end. Okay, so there is one scene where we could sh one day where we can shoot two scenes. What scenes would those be? The school scene, both the school scenes. So yeah, so there's like getting picked up from school in the beginning, and then there's like we go back to lunch tables, right? The lunch table. So this whole lunch table thing. We can probably get somebody to tape that right on tv that should be easy and this is all the lunch table stuff and then we got a kid's bedroom right so this is all those locations so location person's got to write it all down figure that all out so and uh next week uh that's hopefully we're gonna we're gonna rally some more people into this right so now we have to kind of talk to some of our friends um, if I'm going to stop the share, what would you, what kind of role would you, if you want to be a participant as an actor, that's one thing too. You can participate in actor. This is more, this is not such a class for actors as much more of somebody who wants to participate in it behind the scenes. So if you want to be an actor, speak up forever, hold your peace. Uh, if you want to participate and help arrange the shooting, then let us know. Um, but, uh, I'll ask both of you, Avalon, where kind of do you see yourself participating in our film? 
Um, seventh grade's been giving me a lot of homework, so I'd rather not do something like giant. Uh, maybe once I get my feet on the ground, like for the next show or something, I'd be able to do something larger, but uh, really whatever works for you. Like I could do costuming or I could probably do, I could, I know, I know quite a few people with parents who are doctors who don't necessarily work in the emergency room. Yeah. Uh, like there's a genealogist um, who's one of my friend's parents. Yeah, we basically just need a, a, a room. Yeah. Sam room that we could like shoot in for an hour and pull a plug and make it look like your kid died. That's what we need. Okay, so possibly locations. Okay. Uh, Gabby. Ooh, I maybe like to kind of do costuming, but it sounds kind of fun. Or I don't know, directing might be fun. Do you Something have what uh do you have a a, a, a take on it do, what do you like what draws you to thinking about directing um i don't know i'm i'm really interested in like different kinds of shots and stuff i took uh, in middle school i took like two years of video film so i kind of mm -hmm. right okay so yeah it's framing a scene and kind of it is it's like picture drawing you know and taking photography is a whole I art really form abstract shots i don't know i was like kind of thinking about there's like, a lot in this too yeah. the whole fight yeah. sequence you could well, really have fun with that 30 kids running out i was kind of thinking like maybe like you know one of those shots where like the you're under someone's feet and they're like running and i'm like right if we can get 30 kids i mean come on really yeah. but i think we could get a whole we could get the kids from yeah. one line the witch in the wardrobe one day and be like okay guys we're gonna make it look like we're coming out of the school make them wear and different it, shoes and if they're like run right off. And we just have them like run down my mom's driveway, right? <laughs> and get into cars. I mean, it, it could be as simple as that. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, perfect. That's kind of what I was thinking. It was like, we can do a line the witch, the wardrobe kids, make it look like they're coming. We hear a school bell and they come running down my mom's driveway. And yeah, you just kind of do this thing and then they, we have car pickup. Yeah. Or heck, do the, we kind of run and gun it and do it at the Roger Road parking lot on a Sunday afternoon. No one's going to know, right? True, true. That, that, would be, that would be so good. I mean, we do have film recording the incident, but they don't need to know that. I mean, security cameras probably, only go so They probably have a security guard come running around. What are you guys all doing here? Oh, no. We are in the parking lot. Oh. His mom could probably talk to the people. In she doesn't go there anymore. She did, though. I don't know if she did. Okay, well, that's all I have for today. I'm going to stop recording because now we can just chit chat. Here's the other thing I wanted to kind of, well, I'll keep it recording because Lindsay will want to hear this too. Um, we can get real catty in this class. We can talk about the people who drive us crazy, who don't show up, who tell us they're going to do something. I look at filmmaking and theater in general, Brenda and I talk a lot about you guys of when somebody doesn't do something or when somebody does something really well and is kind and is nice. You elevate those people. It doesn't always happen. You get, I, trust me, we had some new kids audition for our most recent play. And I said, oh, this is a stage parent mom. <laughs> I agree. I'm like, it's a total dance mom situation. Brenda, Brenda's like, how can you tell? I'm like, oh, you know, you just know. The kid comes in, they're telling us how much stuff they've done, how they did commercials. I'm like, it's like a bunch of local commercials in some other state. No biggie, right? But it's like, they think they're the biggest bee's knees. And it's like, let's kind of, you know, we want to make the best show. And some of those kids have come in with their super A game and all that kind of stuff, and you never really know. Oh no! Oh, my husband's car just died, so I might have to go. I gotta go. My grand okay, we both gotta go. Okay. Okay, my love. Well, I gotta go pick up my husband down in UTC. That's fun. Um, he knows I'm teaching, so I'm just ignoring it for the next ten minutes. Okay, I'm gonna end. You go off. Get your homework done.